Hi, I'm Alex Alguacil. Today I want to talk to you about Iberia, the greatest masterpiece of Isaac Albéniz and one of the landmarks of the Spanish piano literature, which in my opinion shares its place with Goyescas by Granados and to a different extent with Fantasia Bética by Manuel de Falla. In this video I will talk about how Albéniz's language evolved from small character pieces in flamenco style to a more sophisticated composition and show examples of this modernistic language that places Iberia beyond the usual cliché of only nationalistic and folkloric music. I will also comment and show some images that this music tries to evoke. If you're interested in these other compositions that I mentioned by Granados and Falla you can check those videos in my channel. Iberia is generally recognized as the greatest musical achievement of Isaac Albéniz, a masterpiece that received recognition from many fellow composers, especially French composers. According to Olivier Messiaen, it is the marvel of the piano. It occupies perhaps the highest position among the most brilliant examples of the king instrument par excellence. Iberia was the name the Greeks gave to what is known today as Spain and Portugal, but the music in Iberia, like Fantasia Bética by Manuel de Falla, rather refers to the southern part of Spain, Andalucía, the land of flamenco music. Flamenco is expressed in both Iberia and Fantasia Bética. But whereas Fantasia Bética uses a raw language, aggressive character and harsh sounds typical of the cante hondo, the folkloric deep roots of flamenco, the language of Iberia is based in a more impressionistic modernistic style, giving a more universal vision of Spain. Iberia is subtitled 12 New Impressions, and they are in fact 12 pieces, 12 visions of different places, landscapes or scenes, kind of like postcards of Spain. Albéniz composed Iberia at the end of his life, it was his great lifetime achievement. But before Iberia, he had composed other pieces in the flamenco style. Compositions that were written for the piano, but they were inspired by the guitar. And in fact, they're usually played by the guitar because they express the flamenco character in a more natural way. Like this little piece that tries to imitate the arpeggios of the guitar. Or this other composition called Asturias, Leyenda, originally written for the piano but seems to be expressed more naturally by the guitar. But these compositions were just simple and small character pieces, far from the sophistication of Iberia. So how did the language of Albéniz evolve so much? Like many Spanish composers, Albéniz went to Paris, where he spent 15 years of his life. He became well acquainted with Ravel, Debussy, Fauré and their musical styles, incorporating some of their techniques into his own music. In addition, during the 1880s, Albéniz was deeply submerged in the world of the opera, creating compositions of Wagnerian reminiscences. It was during this time that he experimented with new harmonic and rhythmical complexity. It was actually through his operas that he incorporated new compositional techniques to Iberia, such as the whole tone scale, the mixture of modes and keys, and the treatment of chromaticism. Albéniz's language evolved to a more sophisticated style. 
His music still evoking Spanish folkloric material, but more stylized, using a modernistic language which had its roots in a French way of harmonizing the music. The result in Iberia is a richer and more complex composition than those earlier pieces. Not only the harmonies, the pieces in Iberia are more sophisticated in form too. Most of them are written in a freely adapted sonata form and they are of considerable length. Then he expands the music using the full range of the keyboard, using plenty of pedal markings that are still today a matter of discussion among performers, some religiously following Albeniz's pedal indications and some interpreting them in different ways. The writing is very orchestral too, using extreme dynamics and leaving the pianist to imagine different colors of the orchestra. In fact, some of them were orchestrated. Iberia is technically one of the most difficult pieces written for the piano, with plenty of counter rhythms, hand crossings, difficult jumps, difficult chords. Many times one has to figure out which hand will play what, while the many accidentals make it very intricate to read. Apparently Albeniz himself almost destroyed the manuscript because he thought it wasn't playable, but fortunately he didn't do so. There were in fact pianists who could actually play it. Special mention of difficulty and originality at the same time is the way he treats the dissonances and the way he harmonizes some popular tunes. He adds many dissonances to a company which create a lot of color and in many occasions accompanying several images, like in Lavapiés for example, where he tries to imitate the sound of a very old organ on the street, out of tune and out of tempo and he does it like this. He has this melody. that he will harmonize like this. Or also in the Corpus in Sevilla, which is a very solemn and religious procession that goes like this. First in a very serious manner, introduced by the drum rolls that initiate the procession. And then in a playful manner later. and he harmonizes it like this. My personal image of this famous passage is that when the procession is over, everybody gathers at the main square of the town to celebrate. And we can see many kids playing around, many people drinking and celebrating, and there's a lot of noise, a lot of fiesta, which is typical of these Spanish towns. If we talk about harmonies, for example, the ones that are used in Iberia are more developed, more coloristic and refined, somehow borrowed from the impressionistic idiomatic style. For instance, when he uses the Spanish or Andalusian cadence, which is a trademark of Spanish music and sounds like this, he would harmonize it adding extra notes to make it sound more colorful. even more notes and he would combine it with both hands to make rhythmic patterns. He would make progressions with this kind of chords
Sometimes he does use the Andalusian cadence in a more triadic and direct way, but he tries to make it more chromatic and impressionistic. For example, let's compare this turn that he made in Malagueña and how he does it in Iberia. In Iberia would do something like this. Like he does in El Puerto. And if we compare with what Falla would do with these two chords, clashing them together like this, Albeniz would find a rather more colorful chord for this second one, and creates this kind of mysterious character like this. There is a similar atmosphere in this Debussy Prelude from Book 1. Debussy uses these chords too, that Albeniz will also use. Ravel would go even farther in making a chord out of these two note typical Spanish dissonance. Ravel even uses more jazzy chords to emphasize the humor in the music. He uses chords with lots of tensions, very jazzy ones. Anyhow, Albeniz does use impressionistic devices in his music, like, for example, the use of the whole tone scale. For example, in El Puerto, this main melody that appears at the beginning appears later within a whole tone atmosphere. And he creates a melody within this whole tone scale. Or also in Evocación, the first piece of Iberia, which means evocation, sort of a memory of the ancient Spanish music past, represented in these two chords. But Albeniz writes it in another key, and more impressionistic. And he creates sort of a blurred image of that cadence, hinting at the whole tone scale in the melody again. melodies within the scale and he actually uses it in the climax of this piece so it is an evocation a blurred memory and as such Albeniz makes these two chords sound kind of far away from each other even harmonically that comes actually from Even the last two notes contain those two chords. There are many more images in Iberia because basically there are two types of pieces in the suite. Those that refer to specific places in Spain and they have the names of the towns that are referred to and those that refer to different palos, rhythmic patterns from the flamenco style or different dances. Like for example Eritania which is a stylization of the Andalusian Sevillana or Rondeña, a dance with the rhythmic pattern of the Guajira, the ones that refer to places or scenes like Corpus Christi in Sevilla that describes a religious procession in the city of Sevilla where the statue of the Virgin is carried through the streets, or El Albaicín, a gypsy quarter of Granada, a mysterious piece with many flamenco guitar figurations. Then there are others that seem to depict landscapes such as Almería. And then there are those pieces like El Puerto or Triana that seem to depict the flamenco ensemble with all its instruments, singers and dancers. But in Iberia not everything is about joyful parties and noisy fiestas, there is another side to it. According to Walter Aaron Clark, Albeniz's character was at the same time both joyful and melancholic. On the surface a lot of color and cheerfulness, but behind that a personality more sad and sometimes even depressed, an aspect only known to his close friends. 
Also, the pain he was suffering from a renal disease by the end of his life makes us hear all that melancholy in Iberia. Especially when the fiesta is over and we can see the party far in the distance, maybe at night, like a memory of what has happened, like a vision fugitive, and connects to the idea of evocación and the melancholic and dreamlike character of some passages in Iberia. With Iberia, Albéniz transcended the mere folklorism and created a new style of Spanish music based on more evolved forms and more advanced harmony than the previous Spanish salon pieces from the early 19th century, giving to his work more emotional weight and intellectual depth. Iberia is indeed a sort of Spanish impressionistic work that served as a precedent for the next generation of Spanish composers such as Manuel de Falla or Joaquín Turina and was a reference of a universalized Spanish composition. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wish to know more about Spanish piano music, images behind the music or performance ideas, you can check more videos in my channel and you can subscribe if you wish to receive notifications about my next videos.